Today I'm going to show you how to make a static progressive PIP joint extension splint, particularly helpful for those stubborn contractures of the PIP joint greater than 30 degrees that don't really respond to LMB splints and are too flexed for serial casting techniques. You're going to start with a thin strip of material, preferably with perforations, because the holes and perforations can help you cut slits that you will need for the strap part of your splint. You're going to go ahead and warm the material, and while you're doing that, you can position your patient palm up so they're ready for the molding. And once the material is warmed, you're going to use this opportunity to cut the slits on either side of your material. I apologize it's not zoomed in more in the beginning of this splint fabrication, but towards the end, you'll get a close-up view. But here I'm cutting the little strips for the straps on either side of the splint material. And then I'm going to mold the material over the length of the finger, involved finger, starting just proximal to the MP joint all the way to the tip of the finger. And I like to use a little marker to place over the PIP joint so that we can get nice conformity without having to worry about maintaining that flexion there. Once it's hardened, you're going to apply the Velcro straps. Here we're going to zoom in a little bit so you can see better. You can put one piece of Velcro hook proximally and one distally. And then you're going to want to taper your strap to be easy to feed through the little slits that were previously created. I like this splint because once it's finished, it's very easy for the patient to put it on and off using one hand um, because once it's set up, they only have to adjust one side of the Velcro strap, which you'll see more clearly once the splint is applied in the video. So I'm feeding in one side of the, the Velcro strap and I'm going to secure it down to one end of the Velcro loop. And it doesn't really matter which end you leave fixed and which end the patient adjusts, whatever is easier for them once you practice a couple of times. We're going to complete the loop by feeding the strap in the contralateral side, the contralateral slit of the splint that we created, to create a little trough for the PIP joint to go into. Then you'll slide the patient's finger in so that the PIP joint is lined up with that strap and beneath the contracted PIP joint is that bubble into which the joint will stretch. Have the patient turn their palm up and they can tighten that loose strap until they feel a mild to moderate stretch sensation. Now here you're going to want to check the position of the splint. You're going to want to have the patient sit there for a few minutes in the clinic to make sure there's no signs of decreased circulation or irritation from the splint. But you can see here now that the patient's able to get in and out of this splint using just one hand to tighten the strap because they leave the distal strap or the proximal strap affixed at all times. So once you've tested with the patient that there's no irritation and you've educated them in checking their skin and fingertip for signs of decreased circulation, you can instruct them to build up to five to 15 minute sessions three times a day to achieve maximal gains in PIP joint extension. And once you get to 10 or 15 degrees, you can switch to other methods. Like serial casting, which works better for PIP joint contractures less than 10 degrees. Thanks for tuning in.